Okay, uh, welcome to the special meeting we're having tonight, September, September 14th, uh, 2020. We have one item on the agenda and then one personnel item we will be adding when the time comes. Uh, but we will start today with the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, since we have two joining us uh, via Zoom, let's do a roll call individually, please. Mrs. Bakedell? Here. Mr. McDonald? Here. Mrs. Strike? Mrs. You're Strait. muted, Mrs. Strite. Your your mute is on. You're muted, Mrs. Strite. I think she had trouble getting the mute off. Oh boy. Uh, on another. Um, on the iPad. Maybe she get on the phone. Okay. I just asked her to there, mute. There we go. There we go. Here. Okay. Thanks. Mrs. Zimmerman. Here. Mrs. Sullivan. Here. Dr. Royer. Here. Mrs. Harold. Here. Okay. Uh, we do have one addition to the agenda. Um, that will be the first vote of the two we will take tonight. And that's a personnel issue. Do we need to talk any more about that or wait till it comes up? Just wait till it comes up. Okay. So let's have the approval to change the agenda, please. If anybody's willing to have a motion to add that personnel item. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Thank you. Okay. Now for public comment, um, which would be on the one uh, agenda item that we have today, which is a vote on um, a temporary extension of transportation for the Waynesboro daycare. Uh, anyone who would like to speak, please give your name, address, and please limit your comments to five minutes. I would also ask tonight that uh, everybody just have one, one turn. Um, so use your five minutes and then we'll let the next person speak. Okay, would anybody like to speak tonight? Hi, Erica Nemzik, 318 Hickory Street and the Early Learning Coordinator for the school district. Um, I'm not going to uh, formally speak speak because I had sent out an email to all of you just kind of giving you some background information as to um, some data collected for pre-K counts. So I did print that out if you wanted to peruse that, but just kind of reiterating uh, my support for what the pre-K counts long term and the connection with the transportation and how, in my opinion, um, I know that what we're voting on tonight is the extension through the September date. My personal opinion would be the extension through the term of our grant, which is the 2021-2022 school year. Um, and I have some information as to why I felt that passionate about it that I will give out to you, but I'm not gonna continue to speak on it. So you guys can peruse that if that's okay. okay. All right. Yes, I have read it. I read the email. Okay, thank you. Would anyone else like to speak tonight? I guess I'm a little confused. I have kids at the daycare, grandkids at daycare. And I know that there's been a bus picking up there for years. They were assigned a bus number and then there's a phone call that they were no longer going to be picked up. You know, if we were talking about two kids and the daycare center was two miles back of dirt road and there are still buses going to be coming there to pick up students for other schools. I feel like that we're being discriminated against because our kids are going to bear you a Maori. Um, whenever the, the kids were signed up, we asked if our kids could go to Summit View because that was our school of preference just because that's where we all went. 
and said, nope, you have to go by your address. So your, the kids will be going to Fairview, which was fine. We had transportation as far as we knew from the, day, the Wingsboro Daycare Center. Um, I don't think there's any daycare centers that would be willing to take 23 kids and we don't wanna leave the daycare center. And I don't, I, I'm having trouble understanding nobody's been able to answer that question. And I sent two emails, which I got no response um, as to why all of a sudden, bang, there's no transportation. Um, uh, let me see, let me see. You know, and you know, honestly, for you know, parents or to be asked to pick up additional responsibility money-wise to try to find a bus, because you're not even going to get a van that's going to get that number of kids. It's going to need to be a bus. And um, yeah, I'm just flabbergasted, <laughs> you know, that we're even in this situation right now. Um, uh, I think that was my main points, but yeah, no, no, no one has yet to be able to answer the questions as to why all of a sudden, dang, these kids don't have a ride to school. They were assigned bus numbers. This has been going on for years. I mean, several of these parents can say that their kids have been riding the bus from the daycare to Fairview for years. And now, first day of school, it's quite a shock to get a, uh, a note that that's not happening anymore. So I'm, I'm hoping that this can be resolved in a positive way where we don't have an additional stress. And I know you guys have more on your plate than what but it also trickles down to the families who, you know, the kids are in daycare because they don't have other transportation to, because the parents are working. So we don't have other ways to get these kids to school. And, you know, what, what arrangement that's work that's happening now can't continue because the cost is astronomical. So, um, yeah, I hope that there can be some light shed on the why all of a sudden this changed and that we can make a decision tonight that these kids can be picked up and go on their bus 16 or bus whatever and get to school and everything's good. Thank you. Thank you. And since this is an agenda item and we will be discussing it, there will be more information given with perhaps some of your questions answered um, before the vote happens tonight. Anyone else like to speak? Hi, I'm Amy Donald. I'm with Noah's Ark Christian Daycare Center. I came in front of you February 25th of this year prior to COVID, and I requested a lot of these answers to be addressed, uh, questions to be addressed concerning the transportation based on the redistricting that nobody had reached out to all four child care centers at that time. I did request that you make sure you get back to us so that we had ample time to prepare for these circumstances that have caused all of the daycare center stress. This special meeting tonight, at that time I, address, I notified you that not one daycare center in advance had been contacted concerning the redistricting. That was the first complaint. Because how can we help come together to come to a better solution for all the children that we care for and then send to you? I've never received a phone call back. I had to take it upon myself and our center and our board to make arrangements so that we knew this all was coming, okay? So there was notification. The board did, this board did notify all the parents that you were being redistricted to a new location. So every parent in this community knew that was full well coming, okay? The centers had to take it upon themselves to make sure that they made arrangements to help with this transportation. So in your defense, I understand you're operating off of a budget, but you did not communicate very well with all four of our centers. I've called each and every one of them and in advance, they never knew that. So then I come to that meeting on February 25th and I request for support in finding an avenue to support us with one school possibly, or if we met you halfway. I offered that I could get them at least to the schools that we already transported to, can you help get them bused to the other two schools without causing a real effect to your budget? This all began six to eight years ago when Waynesboro Daycare was given services to all elementary schools. How that was approved, I don't know. I didn't stand in my role at that time. But that wasn't fair that they got services to all of those. And I'm not picking. We all support children in this community. We all build them up so that they're prepared and ready to come to kindergarten for you. 
my complaint is we're going to treat one the same way we're treating all others. And as a board, I'm requesting, just like I do for my board, I give them all the facts and they form the best opinion as to how to approach the problem. If you're going to offer transportation to Waynesboro Daycare, there is no reason that Preston, Carmen at We Care, and myself should not have been included in that. So I'm very disappointed in this board's approach in the fact of answering questions to the community who needed answers. I couldn't wait. I still had to get those students to their home schools that they are going to the correct ones based on what they needed to do. Okay, where you stated that that was their home address, Noah's Ark. I talked to Mr. Holtzman the week before school started. He reiterated your rules. We are within a mile, mile and a half, is that correct? A mile yes. and a half, yes ma'am. Of yes. walking distance from Summit View and Fairview. That is our home school. Originally, Waynesboro Daycare's home schools were, were Hooverville and Summit View. That's where they're supposed to be transported to, one or the other. It was when that center's responsibility to get them to the other schools. Whoever allowed that at one point that caused your budget crisis and all these other dilemmas is on them. How do we solve it now? I am transporting to my home schools like I've always done, St. Andrews, Summit View, and Fairview. If you weren't able to support me, I had to find another avenue to support my uh, parents. So I had to purchase a van. I am making it work and I'm meeting your criteria. I'm dropping off and I'm picking up in the time restraint you a lot so that we're hitting all those hours we need for educational hours. I'm not complaining about the reasoning for the redistricting or the ultimate goal to help the budget for our community and taxpayers. I'm com complaining to you about the favoritism that has occurred in the past that has created parents who are distraught and upset at this time. And it's unacceptable because we are all operating, whether we're nonprofit or for profit, daycares, it's for the children. And somebody from this board should have responded by contacting us about transportation prior to the start of school. And that didn't happen. So my complaint still would be, how do we come to a fair solution for all? If we're going to all be caring for star four quality, star two, wherever we are in the Keystone Stars program that says that we're a qualified center-based child care, which was my request. It's not a mom and pop home daycare. We're center-based care. F help us find support to get our transportation for all. And I believe you somehow we care has gotten some transport. I haven't spoken to Carmen, but I know what I've done. I haven't spoken to Kay about her dilemma, but not, I don't know that anyone's spoken to us from the board. So I'm still waiting for my answer from February patiently waited throughout all COVID, called and called, called and called prior to the month before school started, and then purchased my 10 passenger van, which is filled. And I get two year time restraints at both. So if you're gonna come up with a solution, I already had to pay for hours. I had to already solve it. You took a burden on our facility to offer other things that our children need, technology, that then I had to not purchase because I purchased a van. So right now I'm kind of ticked off more than anything. And I don't know what your answer is going to be, but I think you should take it to heart that whatever it is, it's fair to all. Well, thank you for your comments. And again, when we get to the discussion, the communication issue, I will address that. Maybe someone else will as well. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Can I take the mask? Sure. No, thank you. My name is Preston Howell. I'm the director of the Beanstalk Child Care. Um, and I want to reiterate a couple things that uh, Amy mentioned. One, I, I'm not here to complain about the redistricting. I understand you know, this, this happens. Um, I'm not here to stand in the way of, of Waynesboro Daycare and the transportation they need. I understand these parents, they need transportation. And so I don't want to say anything that comes across as I'm trying to step in the way or, or get their transportation taken away. Um, I'm just here to let you know that, um, as Amy mentioned, there are other daycares in the area. And all we ask is that we have equal treatment. And hopefully that equal treatment doesn't mean 
that now Waynesboro daycare loses their transportation, but that you take into account the fact that because of the redistricting, our children are now in our area. They're more than, than uh, within walking distance of Maori and they would normally be given some transportation and our daycare center should be allowed to be that, take their place for that. They live here, they're redistricted. Um, we've had to come across some um, other ways of getting them to their school. But if the policy is to make sure that those children get to school, if they're not within walking distance, that shouldn't change just because they have to go to a daycare. Um, and I would ask if you consider that, and I, I don't think it, Amy's willing to work with you, I'm willing to work with you, I figure out something so that we don't um, create a budget problem for you, but that we, we can all work this out and figure out how to get those kids to the proper schools uh, without too much damage. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Bonnie Poffenberger, and I'm the guardian for my grandchildren who go to Mallory. Well, one of them goes to Mallory because of redistricting. They've had to go to different places. Um, my grandson was allowed to stay at Mallory because he's in fifth grade. And I, my children go to, um, grandchildren go to Waynesville Daycare Center. Okay, I know for a fact that Waynesboro transport you to the school of your choice because I passed the kids. My own children went to school in Hagerstown. And every year I would get a phone call saying, do you want your children transported to Hagerstown? And I say, no, because I'm already going to Hagerstown because I'm a teacher there. So I know that you're transporting children to Hagerstown. So I'm not sure why we're having trouble transporting our own Waynesboro children to the district they're supposed to be going to. So. Okay. And I'll answer that one too. Uh, and, okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Jessica Young. Um, two of them, well, all three of my children go to Waynesboro schools. Um, we love this district. We love the schools. We love our teachers. All three of mine, my youngest is now in kindergarten. Um, I have one in kindergarten and first grade and they go to Fairview. They've gone to Waynesboro daycare for six, seven years now. Um, my oldest is in middle school and he's gone through, he's ridden the bus from daycare to Fairview. Um, we've never had any issues. We've had nothing but wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experiences with Waynesboro. I'm not here to, to say anything bad about Waynesboro because we have had an amazing experience with everybody in this district. Um, but I did, when I registered my daughter, um, you know, we, we didn't think we'd have any issues transporting because my kids have taken the bus from daycare to Fairview and back. Um, my two youngest ones are too little to walk to school and can't, they need somebody older than second grade to get them out of school or to, to be released from school. So walking is not even an option for them. My husband and I both work. He goes to work at five in the morning. I'm at work when they go to school. Um, so we've never had any issues with transportation until now. And I think our, my, our concern as parents was, was just such a shock. It was just dropped on us. Um, we did, I did email. Um, I did receive a phone call and an email, um, saying, you know, that they, they were working on some things that there was going to be a meeting. Um, so I did get a response and I appreciate that. Um, but it was, ju it's just very, very disheartening that we've had this fantastic experience this i mean for my my oldest is 11 years 11 years old and um we've had great experiences so this was really really just disappointing to be honest that um suddenly and i understand there's other daycares and they have you know they're in the same situation and i get that but um you know waynesboro daycare has been great for us they've been fantastic our kids went to pre-k counts there um, They've done phenomenal. I've had the teachers say, I can tell that they went to pre-K counts. They're at the top of their class. Um, it, we just, we've had fantastic experiences here. So this was a big, big thing that the parents weren't contacted. I wasn't contacted to say, hey, there's no bus anymore. Hey, figure something out. You know, we, 
it was just, it, it's a huge burden, especially right now. There's so much going on. Everything's crazy. You know, we're trying to be super patient with everybody. So it was just an extra stress that honestly we didn't really need. And, um, and I know there's, there's an issue here. So we have to, I'm hoping we can resolve it so that everybody is in agreement with it. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. If not, then we'll move on to the uh, business part of tonight with uh, the first issue will be the personnel issue. And that I guess is Dr. Sternheim. Sure. Thank you. This is Harold. Um, I have a copy of a letter um, that was uh, submitted last week um, asking for uh, the individual is going to rescind their leave request. Um, so I'd like the uh, board to review the letter and um, to approve the uh, basically the rescinding of the leave request for the 2020-21 school year. Okay, do we have a motion before any discussion? Move to approve. Second. Okay, discussion, questions for Dr. Sternheim? Okay, if not, I think we can have a voice vote on this. So all those in favor of approving this personnel change, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item is the discussion on extending the Waynesboro daycare transportation through the month of September. And Dr. Klein, you can go ahead and start this off. Sure. Uh, what we're proposing is that the board uh, discuss and act upon a, an extension of transportation to the Waynesboro daycare center uh, through October 2nd. Talk louder, they can't hear. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> We, the, the proposal is that the, the board consider, discuss, and act upon um, the extending of Waynesboro Daycare Center transportation through October 2nd. Okay, and before the, um, any motion is made or, or we go, let me, I'll just give it just a real brief um, introduction and then through the course of any discussion, if some of the things that were asked are not answered, I'll jump back in and, and try to answer some of those. Um, so the request is due to the fact that the Waynesboro daycare um, did not, at least some board members, did not understand that the transportation was going to be ended. And this happened, it did not come to our attention, my attention, until about three days before school started. So therefore, unlike the other daycares, which seem to have gotten the information, um, they did not. So therefore, they were put into a bind because there was no transportation for these 20 kids. So that's why over the past week, we've been trying to find some way to help the families because everybody feels bad about how the families have been put into this bind for sure, um, that at least we could do some kind of temporary um, solution uh, and then either it ends there or if there's another vote to extend it even further we could have that so that's the reason why we're having this now and again we'll fill in some more here I think uh, let some other people participate if they want to um, in a conversation so before the discussion though let's have a motion if we do do we have a motion to um, extend their transportation which would be to Fairview correct Dr. Klein yes to just Fairview uh, through September ends on a Wednesday, so that's why it's till October the 2nd. Do we have a motion on that to approve that? From anyone? I think the motion is we No, I'm sorry, ma'am. No. This would just be the board. the board. This would be the board. Okay. Okay. Is there a motion to extend this? So moved. Do we have a second? If we do not have a second, then that would mean there would be no extension and the current, correct Dr. Klein, and then yeah. there would be no extra um, transportation for the daycare center. I'll second. Okay, discussion. 
Sit on. Okay. Any I'm discussion? Gonna, I would like to maybe help everyone understand why Waynesboro Daycare Center used to transport to Fairview. They had to transport to Summit View and Hooverville because that was their two schools. Many years ago when I was teaching kindergarten, it started more than six years ago. It started probably 25 years ago. We had to balance out the kindergartens in the district. And so we used Waynesboro daycare because at the time it was really the only daycare. And we would send some of the kids to Fairview, some of them to Summit View, and some to Hooverville, wherever we needed to balance out. So we didn't have 35 kids in one kindergarten and, and 15 in another. So that's where it started. It wasn't started to um, help Waynesboro Daycare over any other daycare center. It was necessity of trying to balance out class sizes. And that's why when we went to redistricting next, last year, we talked about this at our meetings. It was in the newspaper. Parents were notified. I'm so sorry the daycares didn't get notified. I really am. That was, uh, that's not, I'm not proud of that, but it happened. With all the things that have happened this year, we have had our hands full too. But we can't, we feel bad about what's happened to the Waynesboro Daycare Center, but we never treated them any better then they were out of, if Noah's Ark was someplace out in one of the churches outside of town, we would have bust your kids too. It's just that you're in town. I've lived in town all my life and my son was supposed to walk to school. He never did. We took him, you know, that's, it's, we're not treating one daycare better than the other. We're really not. At least that's my feeling. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else want to say anything? Okay. If not, then I'll, I'll try to answer some of the other questions um, that this came up. Time, oh. Okay. Um, uh, let me start. Mrs. Poffenberger, there, there's a state law that says we have to transport to private schools within a 10 miles, 10 mile, 10 mile oh, radius. That's right but there's no law um, within the district. In other words, so if you want to send your child to Garetti, if they're 10 miles away, I don't know any other state that does from this. From the but, state line but, too, it's from our state yeah. line. Well, not, from our district line. Our district from our district line, line. Yeah. from our district line. So that would mean like all the way down to the line going down Potomac Street, we have to go another 10 miles. And if there's a private school within there, there we have to do that. Again, most states, Never heard of that, but yeah, that's, that's, it has to be within that, that mileage, right, right, within that mileage for the private schools, but that doesn't apply to like, like if you live in, you know, Quincy and you want your child to go to Hooverville or whatever, you can't just say, I want them to go there. Okay, so that, that's the answer to your question. Um, the reason for changing the transportation to the different schools, I, I see it as twofold. One was to save money because we have buses going all over the place. Our transportation costs are very high. The second was a concern about the time that the kids spend on the bus. So some of the kids who are being transported, um, like they'd go to one school, they'd get a shuttle, they'd go to another school, and they would get there very late. And uh, it, it, was, it was voiced that, that they did not think educationally that that was the best for the kids. So that's another reason. Um, I agree with Mrs. Bakedell that I'm sorry that the communication was not better as far as the official official letter um, that was sent to um, to all the daycares. Uh, but again, this is just my opinion. I, I again, I'm not trying to put fingers here, but I don't understand why why Waynesburg Daycare didn't get that message. But I I don't want to stay there. I want to move forward with this. Um, um, let's see. Okay, Dr. Royer. Sure. So, so I guess I guess the 
the conundrum that I'm kind of facing is that, um, sure, we, we, we made a lot of dis decisions as a board during redistricting. I think this is one that perhaps I didn't pay close enough attention to because there was a lot of discussion going on for a lot of different things. Um, I think in listening to the other daycare centers here, I guess I'm just wondering that, does it make sense that we don't provide transportation to daycare centers? Is it that big of a bunch of a budgetary impact? I don't know. Um, you know, when I went to, to um, Dr. Klein um, on behalf of the daycare, because I am the president of the daycare board, um, to ask for transportation to Fairview, uh, not to Mallory, because I realized that that would be an extra run um, because uh, hey, just as the executive director wasn't notified and we don't have the funds in our budget. Um, I was originally giving, given an answer by Dr. Klein and Mr. Holtzman that, yeah, that was fine. We could work something out. And then, um, you know, first day of school, that changed. I understand things change. But the, the situation, I guess, becomes is that, you know, as a board member and speaking for myself only, um, we spent a lot of money in this district on a lot of things that impact a lot less stakeholders in all of this. And I guess I'm just questioning that looking at the quality care that these four daycare centers try to provide to our children, we should be very, very proud of that. And, you know, Dr. Klein, you've supported that from the day one with early childhood in here. And I guess I'm just wondering at the end of the day, like all of these kids would have to be transported from their homes, a lot of them. Would it really cost that much? I mean, I just, I just don't know. But I, I feel really badly that you had to spend $10,000 to buy a van that impacted whoever did, yeah, that impacted, 25. that impacted how much? 25. Okay, so $25,000, you had to buy a van to transport students, then that money didn't get, you know, again, I'm not, I think I have become aware of a lot of things over the last couple of weeks. Um, and, you know, I just, um, you know, I know there's very passionate feelings on the board, you know, about all of this. I know that there's been, uh, Mrs. Harold approached me this evening and asked if I planned on voting, um, that there was some that felt I should abstain because it's a conflict of interest. Uh, I don't believe that it is because I don't have any financial gains from the daycare. I serve as a public servant on their board as well as serving on this board. Um, if board members are gonna be asked to abstain from important decisions um, because they feel passionate about an issue, I think that's, tr that's just awful. Um, I guess you better, make a decision if I can't vote or not, because if I can't vote, I don't think I could make that second. Um, I just I just think the board needs to think about it. And when this many people from the community are impacted, I, I just don't understand how much money it is that we that we feel that we don't have um, to, to take care of the children in our, in our district. Mrs. Royer, when we were discussing redistricting, you were the one that kept saying we, we've got to get the kids to the schools that are closest to them because you, you brought up they were missing 15 and 20 minutes absolutely. a day. Absolutely. You were the one that- Absolutely. That and absolutely. And I, don't, I do not believe that the district should have to bust a Maori because it's an extra run. But I have a, I have a question as to why we, if it's within a town and our, our buildings are within two miles. And Bonnie, you know what? If you want to say it, maybe I've changed my mind and I'm allowed to do that, okay? I think many of us have changed our mind on many positions over the years. Sure. But at this point in time, I believe that when we're taking students to some of you, I'm, I'm just baffled as to why we can't drive another mile. It's exactly one mile from Fairview to this building. Okay, so let's say a mile and a quarter to some of you. I just don't understand why we can't go another mile and a quarter to take 21 students to another building. I don't know what these parents are gonna do October 2nd. I do not, they're gonna to have to find other daycares that don't exist. I also have a question for you. So if we're going to bus to Fairview, I think Noah's Ark, we should be busing both to Summit View and to Fairview because they are approximately a mile away. Maybe right. we should. I mean, we, we really have to treat all our daycare cares equally. Well, and I guess, I, I, guess Lynn, I, I guess I've lost a lot of sleep over why, asking myself why we're not. You know, and until I was on the daycare board and I realized the finances of these daycare centers and what they're trying to provide and they're running on shoestring budgets and they're trying to provide quality care, you know, Waynesboro daycares, you know, breaking themselves, trying to run a pre-K counts program, 
So we invite children into a pre-K counts program. We say, come to us, be part of our daycare community. But I hope you don't go to Fairview next year because we can't send you to school. You'll have to find another daycare and go back to your previous provider. It doesn't make any sense to me. I get the Maori thing. And we've already discussed as a daycare board that we may have to buy a van to transport to Maori. We understand that because that is a shuttle that loses instructional time. I'm just struggling with the mile and a half. And again, maybe, maybe I'm you know, totally off base here. Uh, I think the I think the timing of this is is huge a huge consideration. Um, personally, I wish that we would have been having these discussions back in January or February. Yes, February. yes. So the fact that it didn't come up as an issue, um, a big issue between February and the end of August, um, to me throws a wrinkle in the whole thing. I. I I can't disagree with some of the points that you're making, Dr. Royer, but, but the fact of trying to fix it, and, and I think the equity issue, in my opinion, is, is also true, that how can we provide for one and not for the other, especially when the hardship that hit the other daycares? Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, for tonight, unless somebody's going to make some other kind of motion, uh, I, I've already... Um, we're already, if further discussion happens, further discussion can certainly happen among the daycare providers and the board. Um, I'm not saying that this is the end, but for tonight's purposes, I think the vote is simply to take it through the 2nd of October. And if anything else changes, you know, or people have on the board have different views and want to throw something else out there or find some other solution, I mean, that's fine. Um, but tonight's, and it's not that we can't talk more about all the bigger issues, but, but for tonight's issue, it's the uh, simple extension um, to those dates. So again, anybody can still say whatever they want to say. Uh, um, I'd like to say that, um, I don't know how this is going to sound. I want to be critical of us. And uh, to that point, I want to compliment the Noah's Ark people who took us completely seriously and understood us and took some creative steps to solve their own problem. And I guess if we are sitting here discussing changing that, they, they took the board's decision so seriously, they spent 25 grand to fix a problem that we created. I can't tell you how much I admire that because if we're kicking this around now, then that makes us look wishy-washy, I think. That makes us look like we can't decide and when we do decide, we're not happy with it. We had a back to school plan that the night it was voted for, there were board members that said, I don't like this plan now. Okay, uh, meeting last year, we got rid of driver's ed one meeting and we reinstated it at the next meeting. I don't like to look wishy-washy. I like to look deliberative. And I like to look, I like for us to look like a body that is taken seriously. And, uh, you know, no offense to Waynesburg daycare, none at all. But if the other daycares got the information and acted proactively on it, I don't see why we should change it. That's just my opinion. But, but there were not answers given, and she took the next step. So then the the schedule it comes out that all these kids still have a bus number like they did before, then I would say that everything was, was okay and there didn't need to be a change because the kids were signed the same bus numbers that they were the previous year. So, oh, okay. And, okay. You know, with all the confusion over the last several months that we've all been going through, you know, personal and business. You know, that, that would have been my, I, oh, well, okay, there is a bus because they're, my kids are assigned. Okay. Um, and again, I appreciate your comments. Um, the, the, 
the way that we operate is after public comment, it's kind of a board discussion. So, but I appreciate what you have to say there. Okay, any other board members want to add anything? Um, I would like to say that we could begin pointing fingers right now. You know, you made a mistake, you made a mistake, you made a mistake. I'd rather just move on. I believe mistakes were made on both sides, both the board and Waynesboro Daycare, and I'd prefer just putting that in the past and moving on right now. Okay. I, I just think that is best for everyone. Anybody else? Okay, if there are no more comments, then we've had the motion and the second, which uh, we will let stand and uh, go to a uh, individual vote. Roll call vote, please, Mrs. Kuzer. Mrs. Bakedell. Yes. Mr. McDonald. No. Mrs. Streit. Yes. Mrs. Zimmerman. Yes, extending it until October 2nd, correct. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Dr. Royer. Yes. Mrs. Harold. Yes. Okay, so that passes through October 2nd. If there's any other change to that, a further extension or anything else, then we would have to vote on that. Okay, uh, I believe that that's it then for tonight. And uh, appreciate participation of everyone and involvement of everyone. Um, thanks for you guys on Zoom. Appreciate you calling in at the special meeting as well. But I will ask now for a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you.